Hey, welcome to Extra Healthy-ish. This is the big sister podcast to Healthy-ish. Both podcasts from body and soul, well, we've designed them to give you that extra oomph, that extra magic in your day for your mind, body and soul. I am your host, Felicity Harley. Media personality, news presenter and author Hortensia Bure joins me today to talk about the art of a glowing up. Oh, I love that term, glow up. Who doesn't want to glow up? How to define what makes you you, how to push past other people's judgment and, well, step into your power, glow up. She has a new book out called Graceful Grit. Oh, Tanzia, thank you so much for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Now, tell me, how do you stay extra healthy-ish in your life? Oh, thank you so much for having me, Felicity. The way I stay healthy-ish in my life is to be true to myself and to look after my health in many ways as possible, from exercising to sleeping well, in- ensuring that I'm feeding my body with um, nutritious food as well. It really is as easy as that, isn't it? I mean, it, we, we make it, sometimes I think we make it so tricky, but it can be so easy. Now, you've got this fabulous new book out. Congratulations, by the way. It's called Graceful Thank Grit, you. and it covers 10 aerials to help navigate the best version of you. Oh, I think we all want that, but we're just going to focus on one today. And it is the art of glowing up. What do you mean by this? The art of glowing up is something that I believe is about making the best of yourself. And when I say making the best of yourself, we've heard it so many times before, but I feel like if we kind of analyse and and really dig deep into what makes ourselves unique and then going forward with everything that makes us unique and all these special qualities that we have, that's about, that's how we can glow up. For example, I like to ask people sometimes, uh, what's your magic, for example? And I get at times that some, some mixed responses, some are intrigued by my question um, and I can almost hear them mentally scrolling through and trying to find an answer, whereas others respond by saying they, they don't have any magic, which, which I find sometimes can be quite sad because everybody has a magic. And I believe people may understand their magic as a fire that burns within them, something that motivates them, a, an internal drive, a special gift that they may have that they can share with others. Um, it's all it, it's all different. It depends on what you see as something that's that's special to you as an individual. It's a way that you identify your uniqueness, your qualities, and then I encourage people to celebrate this, celebrate and share this because we are all different. What's your magic? Oh, what's my magic? Can oh. you hear me mentally scrolling? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think of my magic as being able to have somebody um, walk away from a conversation with myself feeling a little bit uh, better about themselves. That's something I really try and aim to do, whether it be giving somebody a genuine compliment um, upon something that they may be wearing, a lovely dress or, you know, a, a really great piece of advice if they ask me for it, simply having a really great conversation. So something I, I do definitely try and achieve is having a person uh, leave my presence feeling a lot better or uplifted. Oh, I love that. Actually, you remind me of that favourite quote saying, you are the energy you bring into a room, you know, or is that, that's, that's how it goes, isn't it? Or you, yes. Or you, you know, you want, you want to walk into a room and energise people. And, and I get that. And Absolutely. guess what? You have, you have with me over Zoom. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I very much appreciate that. <laughs> and hopefully, <laughs> listeners, much. she's energising you too. Okay, well, talk us more about, energise us more. How do we go about finding ourselves? You talk about, you know, the first step to glowing up is finding yourself. What do you, what is this? What's it all about? In my opinion, to find yourself is to identify at your core who you are as a person. This is comprised of your values, your morals, your beliefs, everything that supports you and your future and the future that you want to actually create. It determines you from the outlook of what you want, the tools you bring to the table for your life as well. Um, It's undeniably and unapologetically you at your core, um, you know, you in its raw form and nothing else. It's your strengths, your weaknesses, your passions and every everything that comprises of you as a person. 
So some of us might be, you know, some listeners might be thinking, but, you know, I don't love all of that. You know, I mean, a lot of us probably wrestle with certain things about us that we don't love, that we want to change. How can we get better at loving yourself and really meaning it? Of course, nobody is perfect and we all have flaws and we all have little things that we may like to tweak about ourselves. But ultimately, if we love ourselves, we will then be able to accept who we are. And if we do find that there's a quality we may not be so proud of or we may like to alter and approach things differently, then that's great to be able to work on ourselves. And I also talk a lot about that in the book, that it's not simply loving yourself for all your flaws because if these flaws, if you believe that you have flaws and you want to improve on something, then love that process as well. That's all part of it. And I think you're I think you're quite right, is is finding those things and we can change. We can evolve. We're human. We Absolutely. you know, and it's about finding that and working on it until you've you know, until you're you're okay with that. A lot of this as well, you know, glowing up and accepting yourself is, you know, we we're dictated by other people's judgment. How can we get better at pushing past other people's judgment? And how, I mean, you, you're, you're in a public facing role. How do you do this? I, I do this by staying true to myself again. And I know I've mentioned that before, but it's actually about being so comfortable with yourself to a point where you genuinely live life with integrity and, If you are living your life with integrity and self-acceptance, then that is the key. As you learn to accept yourself, you learn to stick to your beliefs, to stick to your morals, stick to your core values, and you don't permit them to be compromised or second-guessed by anyone. Um, And that's when you'll experience a real sense of maturity as well. So in order to accept yourself When I talk about it in the book, you know, you find yourself, you love yourself, and then you accept yourself. And the process of accepting yourself is simply sticking by who you are and knowing who you are and being comfortable with yourself. And I suppose then when people, you know, you do, you feel like you're getting some judgment, you can go, well, that's, that's okay, because that's what you think. It's not what I believe. Absolutely. Everybody has their own opinion about so many issues in life and we may all we all see things from very different perspectives in life because we've all come from different backgrounds from different experiences it doesn't necessarily mean somebody's opinion is incorrect um, or yours is correct and vice versa Um, it simply means we all have different outlooks we all have different ways of viewing things and some people may like apples and some people may like oranges. It doesn't mean either is bad or, or wrong or incorrect. And so we simply have to uh, be aware of that and respect ourselves and accept ourselves and at the same time respect and accept others. We'll be back after this short break with more from Hortensia. Now, you also talk about in the role of mentors in, in the art of glowing up. What Talk about this, the role of mentors, how important they are, and also how they've played a role in your life and what they've taught you. Mentors are very important. And that can they can be in a form of a family friend, um, a colleague, even your employer can sometimes act as a great mentor. Ultimately, a mentor is somebody who can pass on their wisdom and their experience to you because they at times may be a little bit more senior to you. And so they've already um, come a long way into achieving something that you may yet um, achieve. So I think mentors are very, very important. They pass on knowledge, they pass on information, and they guide you as well. They guide you based on their experiences. If you're wanting a specific career and they've already achieved Um, that goal in their life, they're able to help you navigate um, your path to achieving that same success. But at the same time, they may also pass on guidance as to any 
uh, roadblocks that they have come across or any conflicts they may have come across and actually help you navigate around these. And have you had any that have helped you and, and what have they, what, le- what perhaps one lesson that one has taught you that's been really important for you? Yes, I've had many mentors, but of course, um, there's only a handful that I that I feel that have that have really um, stayed with me over a really long path. And something that I predominantly in the corporate sector is to uh, uh, you know get on with your work and um, stay in your own lane and focus on your own grass. <laughs> I love that one. I love that. <laughs> so true. Um, and that people like to do business with people they like. As well, that's a really nice one, and I've uh, I've heard that one from a very senior um, Australian uh, member of the public, which I which has stuck with me. But the grass one, I think we can all do with that reminder all of the time. <laughs> Worry about your own grass, especially when we sit there scrolling on social media. I don't know, maybe that I'm oh, saying that to myself. Right. Sorry, that's listeners. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you talk about being comfortable with comfort. What is this all about? Oh, comfortable with comfort. So you often hear that growth takes place outside of your comfort zone, that you need to be uh, pushed a little bit to uh, to experience a bit of growth. But what if we took this growth process and we owned it with pride? And that's what we were talking about um, previously, about accepting yourself and going on that journey as well and accepting that journey of self-development, self-discovery and being proud of it. So some things are not meant to be understood. They're simply meant to be accepted. And so in my opinion, you know, we could spend our entire life scratching our heads and boggling our brain to try and figure out uh, when the answer is simply not meant to present itself. So sometimes the best thing to do is to let it go. And that's what I mean by being comfortable with comfort is to be at peace through pure acceptance in order to live in harmony and in happiness and to simply accept love, wish well and move on, which is what I say in the book. I like that, move on. Now, (laughs) one thing actually I find interesting is is when people write books, often they have a period of self-discovery and and think, oh, wow, that's actually true about myself. What's one thing that you learn about yourself while writing this book? So writing this book came about because after I wrote my first book, What Women Need, I had such incredible feedback from women and they wanted to continue the conversation. They had so many more questions and so many things to discuss. And so I thought that I was teaching women a few things that I was um, very fortunate to 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 know and instead I found that they were teaching me a lot and the one thing that I have found is that just like with anything in life like your car needing maintenance or us going for our regular doctor's checkups we too need to regularly work on ourselves to ensure that we are on the right path and that we check in with ourselves regularly both in terms of our minds, is our mindset at a good place and our physical health as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's a great point because often we think self-care is jumping in the bath and lighting a candle and putting on a sheet mask, but really I, <laughs> my version of self-care is exactly it's what you just deeper. said. Yeah. Well, you can do all that and jump in the bath and then think about yourself, right? <laughs> oh, Tenzia, yeah. thank you so much for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Thank you so much for having me, Felicity. Well, there you have it, the art of glowing up. Oh, I love that. We all just want the magic to happen, don't we? We want to spread that magic into the world and ultimately feel better about ourselves bringing forward the best version of you. That's what Hortensia is all about. If you want more info, grab her book. It's called Graceful Grit. If you want more info from us, make sure you jump online, bodyandsoul.com.au or follow us on Instagram or Facebook. And remember, there's other fantastic episodes of this podcast, Extra Healthy-ish. We release those every morning, Monday to Thursday. Thanks again for listening. And if you have a moment, we'd be so grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. And until tomorrow... Stay extra healthy-ish.